It's flat back. Hi, um, good evening and welcome to the IVD and Ostomy Support Show. We're just discussing the fact that I've lost my computer chair and I can no, no longer swing and free thing. So hi, I'm Louise, aka Crohn's Fighting. Apologies for the um, unicorn onesie. However, I've had a long couple of days. I didn't sleep last night. I don't think I'm going to sleep tonight. And um, yeah, so patch testing. In singing the bare necessities and scratching my back up door posts <laughs> um uh, along with having to have help to take the top off because you're not allowed to stretch when you have them done but i should hopefully have that taken off tomorrow i bloody well hope so um so what have i been up to the last week or so okay so last week or so i've been up to king's college again and taking part in research for the impact that food has on ibd patients i can't talk too much about it at the moment because um Obviously, I sign, sign agreements and stuff like that, so I can't really say what's been mentioned in meetings, but it's looking good. That's all I can tell you. Um, so, any other things? No. So, apart I, from I mean, because I have to sign out because <laughs> my, 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 I hate Google Hangouts. Can I just? So other than work and being rather twitchy and sitting here in a unicorn onesie, my life is getting rather boring. Oh, I'm also trying out a different bag at the moment. And yay, that's all good as well. Um, this tonight on the show, we are cover covering um, the associated problems with IBD. So not everybody realises, but along with having Crohn's or UC, even being chronically ill, you can still get other things that are associated with long term steroid use other parts of the other ways of the um, disease presenting so tonight we were covering rheumatoid arthritis but unfortunately that's una unable to do the show tonight i'm not really too sure about the rheumatoid arthritis thing so i can only talk to you from what i know about briefly so we're covering things like arthritis which is what steve has um we're also covering things like osteoporosis osteoarthritis which is either um, IBD induced or overuse of steroids over the years induced. Um, and we'll be covering things like Raynards and joint pain and sort of how to get through the winter months and cover that. Um, so, yay. Uh, my brain has gone. There was something I was going to say and I can't function straight because I've had about four hours sleep. Um, I will pass you over to Steffi and we'll go from there. Hi, I'm Steffi at Colitis Swastomy. Um, I have only left the house twice this week. I have had a nice boring week. Um, yeah, I've not done anything. <laughs> Jacob's £16 too. That's probably the most exciting um, thing that's happened this week. Um, Rara and I tried to make snow gloves today with dinosaurs in them. My hot glue gun didn't stick them, so I was a bit crap. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, dinosaurs make Christmas. Um, yeah, no, that's it. Other than, like, messaging Rachel in, like, every day and ringing her just, just to annoy the shit out of her, because why not, right? Um, so I'll pass you over to Rachel. The hipster for that. What a hat. I know. I, my my mum's down, and we're tidying up the... We're sorting out. I've decided I hate my flat, so we've organised and stuff. So I came out of hospital today. So I was in eight days, seven days. I was in Halloween. Um, I've had my birthday, but you've been in nine days, haven't you? Was it not? I lose count. So yeah, it was hard admission because I had to get into because of a hospital and they run they don't really want to and do surgery so but however if they don't do surgery i'm going to keep getting infection and sepsis and i feel like they've just given up and i'm quite young i'm 31 so i feel like it's too young to give up so with the kidney function it hasn't got much poorer it's still stage three but it won't continue the battering so i came out of hospital today which was good um, my mum's come down, which is amazing. It's really nice to have her. We're sorting out the flat. Mum's literally organising everything because my flat is lots of stuff I've hoarded. So it's really messy, but it's it's keeping us both busy. And um, 
I'm trying to rest as well as sort of sort it out. So, but it's, it's been something that's been annoying me for a while. Um, and then I plan to rest Steve's on a better, but I was just frustrating. I just, I don't, I'm writing a blog post in, soon about like what you don't see because I'm really good at hiding. Like I felt I seriously was scared I was going to die last week and I think not many people see that side but it's just frustrating. I'm not really getting an answer and I'm just getting it's just, I'm just a bit frustrated. But, like, the girls are amazing really supporting Steve and I had loads of messages of people which is really overwhelming but when I was poorly last week I couldn't message everybody so I just wanted to say thank you for like messaging me and keeping me thinking of me and it means a lot um yeah and that, that's me really I think next week's just resting and slowly do the blogging but I'm not really worried about it too much I thought but you were I'm, gonna miss Steve out then when you were like no I and... miss my Steve oh Steve so um, I, can I just can I just say um, that I hope Vicky gets better because she's just gone in with se- either suspected or sepsis. So I think it is, yeah, I think it is sepsis. But Vic- there's a few, there's loads. There's um, Adele gone in, Georgina's gone in, Nicola's in, isn't she? And oh. Vicky, I've just come out. I think it's it's one of those times. Yeah, because um, um, I'm up Vicky's neck of the woods tomorrow, so I'm going to message her if she's not too bad and see if she's up for, for having... A cranky, cranky me visit, and I just to check on her. Oh, that'd be nice because I think it's it must be hard when your hospital's not in your local area. There was a lady on my ward that was in Weymouth, and I did feel for her because her family weren't, you know, were quite far really, and uh, it makes me think about whether I, if I do do surgery in London, it'd be a bit further. I suppose that like your hospital's a bit far away, isn't it, Louise? Yeah, mine, 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 mine's not too bad. If, if I get the train and I get the fast train, I'm only there in 40 minutes. But if I get the slow train, it's about an hour and a half. <laughs> but, okay. um, I'm stuck in the middle of the It's worth it. I've got one that's eight miles away that the um, I'm not a big fan of. And then there's one 20 miles away, which is where my colorectal team is. So, oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. I remember it actually when it takes the same length of time to get to both. Because the fryer is just pretty much straight down the A19. And James Cook, if anyone lives in the Keyside area, they will know how horrific Martin Road is. So um, that it's just traffic lights after traffic lights after traffic lights after schools. And like, mm. oh, it's ridiculous. I'm pretty sure that's what like Birmingham's like. <laughs> Steve, what about you? Like, like, it's about, uh, well, Right, I'm Steve, uh, aka hashtag Bag Daddy. Uh, <laughs> this week, my uh, um, haven't really done much this week. Haven't been to the gym at all because I've been feeling like poo. Uh, I got I had flu, and then I had the flu jab on top of my flu, which kind of dragged it on a bit. Mm. Um, which I was told to do. I did, I did give the nurse all the information. She suggested that I have it, so I'm not getting told off by any of you. <laughs> Uh, I've been collecting my check for the charity still. I'm up to £704 at the minute. Check you out. You need to let me know uh, where I can, where I can set, set, send some much needed fundraising and love. Well, it's, it's crazy, you know, because I set up a, like a Just Giving page. It was a different one, but I've had, I don't think I did it right because I've had no hits at all. So what I've been doing is actually getting people to send it directly to my bank. Uh, it's all going on a form. Lauren's going. Lauren's going to have all the forms with all the money. They're all going to tie up, and uh, because that way, see, because DHL, my, my employer is um, is matching what I make. Mm. So it's kind of if it if it went through a different f- uh, payment or method of payment, they're not going to be able to to match that. At least it's on this one form. It goes through the match it scheme, so they they can double it up. But uh, no, it's, it's done really well, and I, I saw a, a little um, screenshot of tomorrow's um, team talk at work. I got an article in there, Yay. so uh, that that's good. So hopefully, a bit more, a bit more um, sponsorship. Should get knuckle down to training then. At the moment, I've just been concentrating on cardio, but not this week. Uh, just this flu dragging on, chesty cough. You know, coughing, but I'm bringing up mucus and stuff. So. Uh, Hopefully that that will that will subside, and really that's pretty much all I've done with my week. I've really just, done much. 
Can I just put in there, Steve, while it's yeah. still pretty early in the show? Louise, are you getting any um, messages from anybody that would normally watch the show saying they can't view the, the live feed? Because my mum's just messaged me saying that she she was like, has the show started? Because all I'm getting is the start picture. She's not able to view any of it. No, I've got Graham on. I've got Luciana on. And they're all fine. Oh, my mum can't. Trooper. I know my mum and Rachel's mum can't access the live chat, and that might be because they're on the tablet. Possibly, yeah. No, the but, live chat's active and going, so I'm typing on but it. But like the show's not. It's not accessible. Like my mum's not finding it accessible, and normally she watches it every week. I do. I have had people this week also saying that, um, they haven't been receiving the the little um notification to say we're going live that we normally that normally happens. Um, okay. I just thought I'd say that while it's early enough in the show to see if it can be rectified. I don't know. But you have the tech wizard in, in the background somewhere. So. Yeah, okay. What I'll do what I'll do in a minute is I'll just check something. I'm just gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mute my mic and that quickly and my video and I'm just gonna go and check with somebody, okay? Okay. So, sorry, Steve, for putting in there. No, no, that's no, cool. I kinda of finished it anyway. Um I'm just trying to think. Just been worried what? about Rachel really. Oh. 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 I'd say young love, but you know, <laughs> he's old. We've yeah, we've done. I've school. done well this time. Last time I was in, I was a bit frustrated and a bit horrible. But this time, I've been quite kind. Like a, a few times, I've played up, but it's quite hard because when you've got distance and you're poorly, you just I just want to have a hug. But yeah, he's this. Can't he's... always have that. What's it like, Steve? having your having arthritis because I only get I got tested last year just after my stoma for um fibromyalgia which I was told at 14 I had and they tested me for arthritis as well but I don't have either um according to my bloods but my but joints it's... swell up and they're yeah, so yeah. painful do you get that I do yeah but mine mainly is it's um it's under the uh, title ankylosing spondylitis which which my other forms of arthritis fit into that like uh, my my hip is my main one and that's uh, sacroiliitis it's where the uh, the sacrum meets the ilium and there's like a little there's like a little joint in there that, that that's where my main pain is now when it's flaring it's ridiculous you can't you can't walk you literally stop you on your spot with like a searing pain in, in your joint um, I had I had numerous inje injections cortisone injections that they were working for three weeks and then it, after after about seven or eight of them injections it, it went down to like a couple of days of relief and, and in the end it, it just wasn't even worth it they said to me we can offer you like a guided injection into the actual joint itself but uh, the chances are that will make the pain even worse which oh my god the thought of even worse pain than than you're already in agony it's it's a no-brainer. It's not going to happen. Spondylitis. I'm not even going to attempt to say the first word. <laughs> An ankylosing spondylitis. You know what? I'm not actually sure. It's just a isn't form it when they fuse? Right. Isn't ankylosing spondylitis where they fuse together? I, I think you're right, Rachel. I think you. I shall Google okay. it. It's kind Rachel, of my thumb. Wearing your hospital bracelet. Yeah, I, I. It's a comfort thing. Yeah, I can't take them off for a few days. She's one of one of these uh, <laughs> one of these festival goers that wear the bracelet for like two years afterwards. Oh, it's a comfort <laughs> thing. Okay, I can just confirm. Um, I've checked both on the um, iPad and mobile apps, and accessing the show is absolutely fine. So it could be a technical issue on the other end. Right. Okay. Worth a try. Try and try and to reconnect again, isn't it? Yeah, it might be worth going out and going back into the links off of one of the pages rather than uh, directly from YouTube. Uh, Ankylosing spondylitis is a type of arthritis that affects the spine. Symptoms include pain, stiffness, and it says the spine bones vertebrae fuse together, resulting in a rigid spine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and can I just do a quick medical disclaimer? We are no way medical professionals. Anything that we do is purely experiences that we've gone through and advice that we can give. So if you do have anything that needs to be seen by a doctor, please go and see the doctor and don't take what, what is said as, as possible. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so your so with your arthritis, Steve, was was you was I right saying that you've got the spondylitis bit with it as well? Yeah, yeah. 
But it's it's kind of like uh, it's really mostly my hip, the left hip. It's strange, you know, because once it starts, it knocks you off your feet. You can't walk, and then you'll be limping, and then then you'll be limping on the one leg, and then all of a sudden, I could have like a month of agony. It'll disappear, and then you're absolutely fine. And then you, then it starts on the right side, and then you'll start on the left side, and you, and you got like two limps. No, and, and I mean, the constant, exactly the constant the rocking. We'll, 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 sorry, sorry, Louise. The constant rocking will f make your back ache. Then, so it's kind of like you, you're going mad. You're thinking, "What the hell is happening?" No, but I'm exactly. It's going in my thumb now. Yeah, I know because uh, Rachel was saying about your hands and that you were struggling with your hands. But is there any chance if it's going from all those different places that it could be more rheumatoid based than, or have they not tracked? I don't know. I don't know at the moment. That's the diagnosis they gave. I mean, um, I really it's, don't know the difference in. In room RA and yeah, because I've got ost I've got osteoarthritis, but mine's mine's been bought on because of the amount of steroid courses that I've been on in the years, and the main um, culprit for that was a uh, pred uh, prednisone. <laughs> and um, I can tell you, I think at one point I was on like like ninety milligrams a day for like nine tw nine to twelve weeks at a time to try and get my groin to flare under control. And since uh, from 2012 until about 2014, they put me on budesonide and I just refuse steroids now at all because I had I had bone density scans, which is they which they call a full body scan done. Um, 2013 or 14 it was and I had it in my hips. But now my ankles have started to go as well, more so my left ankle than my right. But you guys know I was laid up for most of last week for two or three days with heat packs on my ankle and I couldn't even get my foot into my boots. So I had to dig out my, my boots that were a size bigger than what I normally wear, just so I could try and get something on to go and do the school run. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's the same with, it's same, same with um, osteoporosis though, isn't it? But the osteoporosis is the, is actually the, the thinning of the bones where the bones are crumbling, I think. That's a lot to do with steroid use as well, isn't it? Yeah. Is that what that has osteoporosis as well, or wasn't she quest? Weren't they investigating that? Um, she's definitely got. She's got. That. She's had really a few times. Like, since she was fifteen months. Yeah. She's got irritis, which is um, something to do with the eyes, and then she's got Crohn's, and she's as far as I'm aware, she her colon that's left is it could always be at risk of having going toxic. Okay. Um, I think she's already had a hip replaced due to arthritis. We were looking at her knee, um, and like all of hers just has been, it's like it's a vicious circle for her because she's needed steroids for the Crohn's, and obviously, steroids ruin your bones anywhere with your arthritis if you've got arthritis. Um, I mean, I think they're just a job of tic tacs anyway. Yeah, the... I used to black my doctors to give me because it was the only thing that made me feel better. And it was probably all in my head. And last time they offered me them, I was like, nope, nope, I'm not doing that again. I've had not had them for eight years. It's not happening. I had them for about seven or eight well, years. And, the, and the, the, what, at the start, they were brilliant. I felt fantastic. Woke up dreaming of cornflakes and toast. I never, <laughs> ever eat breakfast. And then, and then after a while, it was just thrown at me. Every single time I had a flare, it thrown at me. It'd start on 10 tablets a day for a week. And peter down to one then it would flare up again now the, the, not only the, the weight gain the arthritis might be a good a good chance that started through it and but my eyesight really suffered mm. you know i have to use reading glasses now when i'm reading the tablets i can't see the bloody writing and, and, and i had perfect eyesight before that oh it's funny that is isn't it richard you say that uh, when i was first not oh steve i just said richard didn't i because i was typing to richard as i said that when i was first diagnosed with my Crohn's, my eyesight was perfect i was 20 20 and over the years the more steroids i've taken and the more my illness has got worse i'm as short-sighted as anything now i'm really bad i'm like to the point of i can sit down at a table in a pub <coughs> with my friends and that person will turn around and then i'll realize my fr my friends are actually two tables that way mm. I remember chatting to the optician and they were saying that they can actually, this optician was saying that she can actually recognise people who have OBD from looking at, into their mm -hmm. eyes. Wow, that's amazing. And the fact that they had a t-shirt on saying I've got OBD. 
Yeah, but I thought that's really, it just shows you there's a lot of other stuff that can happen because of it. Um, a lot of, it really annoyed me though, because when I was 14, 15, I saw like an arthritis specialist and um, she was like, oh, there's no doubt about it. you've got fibromyalgia. I was like, all right, okay. Um, so for the next 15 years, I thought I had fibromyalgia and then I got told after a blood test that I didn't. Um, but it, they have no explanation for when my body just practically gave up. I couldn't move. My dad used to have to um, give me a phone when I sat downstairs so that I could. Um, my mum's just texted me saying that you're making a laugh, Steve. Cool. Just I'd let you know. Um, my dad used to pick me up from the sofa and take me to the downstairs toilet and wait on the stairs until I was done and pick me back up. And, and like, I couldn't move at all. Um, and I get that towards winter ones. The only time I didn't get it was when I was running. But maybe that's because I was taking cod liver oil every day. Who knows? But um, I always got told, though, that joint issues is a massive thing to do with having IBD because it's all, it's all inflammatory. Um, and my, my muscles around my joints ache. Like, I mean, you guys, when we were in Cardiff, you heard my knees when I bent down. And... There's no explanation for that, and I've had that since I was 11. Cookie mm. knees. That's mad, that is, you know. More than you, mentioned, knees. you mentioned fibromyalgia. Uh, yeah. Probably about about 20 years ago, I really used to suffer with my back. I'd go to, to bed flat, and I'd wake up in the fetal position all curled over, and I couldn't straighten my back. And then, and then I happened to read, this was way before the internet, I happened to read in a newspaper about someone suffering with fibromyalgia. I've took it to the doctor, and the doctor's pretty much started treating me for it, even though he hadn't diagnosed me. And, and, he, and he, I think it was amitriptyline, mm -hmm. like a muscle relaxer that's also treated for a num number of things, including bed wetting, which wasn't a problem. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I, was waking up, I was waking up in agony, and I was hanging from the door frame until my back clicked. And, uh, and it worked a treat. But I never actually got the diagnosis, and then that stopped working. And then it tried um, acupuncture, which was brilliant. Mm. But it, I always, I always wonder, you know, was that the staff of staff arthritis back then? I mean, and then sort of laid dormant for years and years. But I've always kind of suffered my with my back. Sorry. No, carry on. Finish. My sister told, um, I think in the summer, could be this year or last year, she. She, at the time, was working on the CDU, the Clinical Decision Unit, and she said one of the doctors had turned around to her, not about me, but, um, and said that fibromyalgia was all in people's heads. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at her and going, say, say that to my friend Stan, who has had rods and, um, like, them electro electrodes stuck all the way down her back. She's... Her, her fibromyalgia is absolutely screwed her back. She also has that, like, arachnophobitis or something. It's like, a, it's where your bones start to go funny. I'm sure she had that. But, um, but it's funny because, like, people will tell her that she's faking it. And she had to retire when she was 14. It's a hard one to prove, isn't it? Back pain. It's, that's, that's the tough area. She physically back pain. If you've got back pain, true back pain, there's no... There's just no escaping from it. You know, you, you might be able to get relief from a hot bath, but you've got to get out of that hot bath eventually, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There should be a machine got, that you can link link to. I've All got right. a question. Okay. She's so, the hand and everything. I know. <laughs> I've got a question. Me, pick me, pick me. How many people do you know that have, I think I've asked this before, but I'm going to ask it again, that have got bladder issues i know louise does but a bladder issues because of ibd and have catheters because of ibd do we think it's common it is it is uh, it's, as far as i'm aware with ibd most of the common issues with catheters always tends to be after surgery but no i mean long-term catheter use like they like they their inflammatory bowels either affected the bladder or the bladder has been affected because of steroids or medication <laughs> See, I haven't had experience of that. I've heard of things, but that's normally for people that tend to have the Crohn's within the genital area. Okay. Um, I just wondered. 
wondered like how well the instance is with bladder issues with with Crohn's and colitis because I believe there are some people out there I just wondered how common it was because I know Graham on, 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 on your uh, your yeah. forum as a question because it might be one be one to stick up on the show yeah I know great Graham has um has self catheterizes <coughs> he's got Crohn's or colitis and I know that you know hi Graham but I know that um he, I'm not sure if that is because of that. I just wondered how common it was because we talk about arthritis, we talk about all the other conditions, but we don't talk about other organs like, you know, like Steve's heart's been affected because, you know, because the, the heart can be affected. There's other things as well. Yeah, you, yeah that's, you, that's a good point, that is. You've got things, especially with Crohn's and UC, especially dependent on the meds and stuff, gallbladders, pancreas. Yeah, pancreatitis. Yeah, yeah. Um, I... I've noticed that a lot of people um, with IBD find it, or have had IBD, find it harder once they've had a catheter in to actually to go to the toilet for ages. Because, you know, you've got to, within, like, so many hours, you've got to have, like, peed so much before they'll put it back in because your bladder's retaining. Um, and then, like, they do a bladder scan. I know a lot of people that have IBD and I've had IBD because I still suffer with it. Any time they put catheter in, I know for a fine fact that I'm going to have to practically drown myself in with drinking to be able to pee. Like after Jacob was born, they they wanted me to drink three liters in an hour, and I'm like, do you want me to die? It's but funny. I had to do it just so that I could go home. They didn't catheterize me again, and to go home because you have to, sometimes they they make sure that. You have to drink, like, and you have to empty it, otherwise they won't let you go home, or they cafeterise you again. They should make it alcohol flavoured, and then I'm sure there wouldn't be a problem at all. Then. As long as it wasn't some beer, that'd be all right. <laughs> Four liters. <laughs> Jaeger and Red Bull. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. So, great, great. Messaged me, and he said, "Hi, Rachel. My catheter started because of surgery from when I had my rectum removed. Over the years, it became difficult to pass water. Okay, so I don't think it was Crohn's or colitis, but I know that some people, like, you know, one of my one of my friends had a oh no, it's completely not related, but had a superbute catheter and ended up with an ileostomy because it perforated, <coughs> perforated the bowel. But this, I just wondered because when I was in hospital again, like." You know, IBD, before you get diagnosed, it's kind of a minefield if you don't know what it is, the doctors yeah. don't know. With mm -hmm. bladders and my condition, I think it's even more so, like, it takes years sometimes to get diagnosed and even to be believed. And kind of you will either get told to self catheterize or they can't fully tell you. It's only because I think my cells mutated and they had to remove the bladder. Why I got my bladder removed and ileoconduit. If I had a doubt, I would get mine removed because most people with cancer like don't normally get their bladders removed. They leave them in until they get shrimp. But I just wondered. How, I just wondered how common it was because, you know, I just out of out of curious because I know there's one girl that's got an ureostomy because of corones possibly, but I'm not sure. That's it. That's yeah. all I, I guess, want. To I guess if it goes microscopic and it starts to cling to other organs, because that's an, that's something you suffer with, isn't it, Louise? That it just goes and anyway. that is why I still can't ha currently have my Barbie butt done because my bladder is sticking to part of my large bowel and sticking to the front of my abdominal wall. Right. Okay. And until the microscopic is under control, which I don't know yet because I still haven't had the tests done to check the biopsies because they want to leave me on the vedalizumab now for a year. But I found out on Tuesday that that may not be a possibility because I'm having a lot of side effects from the vedalizumab and I've currently, um, for what they thought was actually eczema on my hands, is actually a contact allergy and the postules that I'm getting are actually infected and they're going deeper than just skin layers. Okay. Um, it's not just that uh, it's not just derma that are, not not just dermatology that are getting involved in that now um obviously they're doing my patch testing i should hopefully have the full results at some point next week looks if anyone hasn't seen louise's post it looks like goddamn dot to dot on her back oh no it looks like matrix i swear it looks like you know the matrix when you go out of the machine it seriously it looks like the matrix i saw it i thought oh my god that, or it's it. like it's like um a braille a person that uses braille's worst nightmare because it's just like dot, 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 not and it's like i'm currently or, using the door post like the blue. Of the cell. i'm currently <laughs> using the door post like blue out of um jungle book and i've got a brush and i've been i used to look after a lady that used to do that oh. 
Um, but I mean, Richard was saying that um, he's had arthritis twice, once due to the IBD and the second time was either IBD or an infection second time round and that he's been had methotrexate the second time, but surgery was required to remove both the collection and the inflamed rectum. I think Richard's been OK since then from what I can gauge from that. But, You've just um, jinxed him, though. I haven't just jinxed him. I jinx myself all the time, hey. Please, <laughs> you can only... Methotrexate and, and Humira have been fantastic. I've said this a number of times, but they've been absolutely brilliant for my arthritis. You know, they've kind of slowed down the flares, and the flares are not as bad as when before it. Yeah, he never touched my, obviously, he never touched my um, colitis. Never helped at all. Be before I joined the groups, I didn't know anything about biologicals being in mind i work well i worked in radiotherapy with cancer patients i don't know anything about steroids and biologicals i've learned so much from you guys and i am so grateful my disease hasn't pro you know hasn't allowed me to have that it has other other complications but i don't haven't had that but what i've noticed is it seems like it's it is individual it's like yes some some drugs work better for arthritis and than they would on Crohn's. But I've noticed from you guys, like it is so individual. They can't brush you all with the same brush. It's like, no. you know, Crohn's really, I, I want to know if Crohn's or colitis are staged because you know, cancer, you get stage one, two, three, four, five. Is Crohn's staged? Mm. Because different people have different progressions from what I see. Crohn's, you know, I think with Crohn's, it's more where it is in your body, isn't it? Like. Because right, okay. it can go right from your mouth all the way through. Yeah. Well, some of know colitis, feet. colitis is just your large bowel, but people then get pouchitis because you have active disease in your rectum that doesn't always show at the time. So right. um, I don't think there's like stages because... Um, I think but, uh, do you know? Do you know what? There, there's some of the research that is being done, though, and so I, I think it is in stages. I, I think that uh, I think it should be treated as stages. I think it. I, I think it should be treated as stages. But that's. But I don't know enough to comment. But from how I see how cancer was treated, as somebody who worked in the field, it seemed to me that although you can't have a regiment regime, and you don't with every cancer is different. But you sort of have a generalised one. It seems like I know you have microscopic and macroscopic, but I wondered if if staging would help. Not that I can change anything. It was just it was just a thought that I thought you know if it, it was staged because it affects everybody differently. Um, yeah, true. Just like what you have might affect somebody else differently because we are all individuals, and I think there's no kind of... like me and Steve both had colitis, and ours was nothing like. Yeah, it's kind so of like. <laughs> Thing is, it, it, it can lie dormant. I know people have had colitis, you know, for Did years and years, and, and, and nothing's pink? happened. Nothing's happened. They've been absolutely fine, and then, but but it can change just like that, can't it? Yeah. Have we lost someone? Sorry. Yeah, I thought Rachel just spilled peppermint tea. She just swore and then just went offline. Oh, oh she's not bleeding spilled the tea again. That's what it looked like. That oh, like she hasn't done a tap on a your oh, back. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna post her a tippy cup to do have you, the peppermint tea in. What what do you think um you two is the main side effect you've had then from having IBD? Like what's the the well, one that's apart, giving you the most jit? Apart from the, the IBD symptoms. The arthritis <laughs> in the hip, absolutely the worst pain ever. Um colitis was nothing. Luckily, they kind of both didn't happen at the same time. I was either having a, an arthritis flare or, or a colitis flare. Now, if they'd have both happened together, together that would have been horrific because obviously trying to get to the toilet when you can't walk would have been a nightmare. So it's kind of like... Which of your hips is the one that gives you the most jet? It's my, le my left one. I, my left like an old lady hip. I tell everyone it's an old lady hip. Uh-huh. Because it, it, but, it like feels like it dissipates. But remember what about one you, Lou? Oh, sorry, Steve. Go on. Sorry. Go on. I, one of the <laughs> one of the my consultants said the reason it's in the left area because that's where your main inflammation is in my bowel. Same. So whereas that's... mine's in my right. <coughs> is it really? Yeah. So what's your See, worst symptom then, Ling? My worst symptoms is when my joints swell up and I'm worse. Oh, it sounds really weird, but I'm worse during time of the month as well. 
so a lot of women say that it it bugs me because it with mine it's it's like shooting pains and even when you're laying down with a heat pad on and you're laying down and you've you've got like the heat pads on you've taken the pain meds it's like a radiating pain so you've got the heat from where the joint is swollen you've got the pain from there but then you're getting shooting plain shooting pains in other places it is it's like it radiates up steve i don't know if you've experienced that steve i have yeah definitely and i've kind I of thought you were about time of the month then sorry i was like <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure he doesn't <laughs> but no um the the, the pain radiates it, it even even though it's centralized in one place it seems to move to other places so say like you know my ankle was really bad last week and i was dosed up to the eyeballs even though it's in my ankle i could feel it shooting up my leg to my knee and it felt like my the whole bottom of my leg was swollen but i get that with the reynards as well because my circulation's really bad my toes swell up and my feet swell up and my toes go red and they feel like they're popping off but sometimes it feels like it's going from the lower leg but that weren't reynards <laughs> that's, that's that's surely a nerve thing i remember injuring i remember tearing a, a muscle in my shoulder blade and all the pain radiated to my wrist to my left wrist and, and it's kind of like i didn't feel no pain at all up here all in my wrist that's like that's a nerve damage thing that is where where it actually shoots down that's the thing though i've had surgery that many times on my tummy and i've had that much done in there sometimes i don't even know where the bloody pain's coming from i just know it's coming from somewhere yeah but it, it's like it's like oh it's the arthritis gets graded doesn't it richard was just saying to me so they'll grade you on mild moderate severe and then they'll muck about with your medications to try and find the right combination to get it under control it's like you steve with the humira yeah they was using the humira humira both for me for my crohn's and for my joints but the reason one of why they're testing me at the moment is they want to try and put me back on something to help with the joints but they can't do that until they found out if there's anything else that i'm allergic to because i can't take methotrexate <laughs> I can't take infliximab mad unless I want to have her anaphylaxis and give the old deer a heart attack in bed next to me. And um, Humira, I've got adding antibodies too, so I'm a bit of a loss at the moment. At the moment, what to do other than to keep taking pain meds? Have any of you taken infli? I know you have, Louise. Have you taken infliximab, Steve? I haven't. No, they, they were going to try me on uh, when when the Humira wasn't working. They were going to try me on vedolizumab. But because my bowel was in such a state, they, they pretty much said um, there's like a 20% chance of it working and it's going to take eight weeks to be fully in your system. It was a pointless venture, really. It'd gone past repair. Because when so, I, I, I had one lot of infliximab and I remember getting the information sheet and it was like, if you get cold, you'll die. If you get soccer, you'll die. <laughs> the cough will die and like yeah. I gave, my mum was on night shift and I gave her the information that like, you're not taking I'm like um, I, am. <laughs> I remember anyway, reading the sheet it was I, it was probably the last thing I tried before methotrexate and the first biologics I think I tried and that sent my joint something chronic like I couldn't move I mean how the, many... amount, the amount of warnings I was reading the warnings and it's kind of like um, may cause blurry eyes and I'm like I can't read this May cause a, a cough. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. May cause sudden death. Oh wow! Oh, my parents had had a fit. Like when I said I'd do it, but I suppose they've I got mean, to give warnings there just in case. And because of that, what them warnings? I never once read the warnings from that track set. No, I can get pregnant on it. I didn't know like anything to do with it. I just remember my ex's mum used to give me it once a week. If I remembered, mm. because I'm really bad with meds. Mm. But I think my joints were probably the best on methotrexate, though, which obviously Natalie takes, doesn't she, for her arthritis? Yeah. Do you do you still take it, Steve, or is it just? I do, yeah, but I'm a tablet form. I have it in. Uh, a lot of you people have nauseous. it in the injection. No, no, oh, don't, don't you, Steve? Yeah, you get, it's awful. On the Monday, you get quite nauseous, and you like to sleep sometimes when I'll you're back from work. Yeah, I've took I never it, ever so, used so to get it on the Sunday night now. Mm. I never ever used to get the methotrexate hangover. Oh, I but you wouldn't have said that to me. I've ne I never got that. Maybe because I was always drunk. <laughs> Me methotrexate's lethal, though. Methotrexate brought me up in ulcers in my mouth. I was coming up with skin rashes and all sorts when I was on methotrexate. It was not kind to me at all. 
me. Yeah, some people are absolutely fine with it. I mean, it works a treat for me, but you just you just got to settle for the uh, for the side effects, really. Because do you do you sometimes wonder if the joints and obviously the, the, like the things with the arthritis and everything else? Because Richard was saying about the grading, because as we know, arthritis is graded, but UC is graded as well, isn't it? So you've got mild, moderate, severe. Yeah, that's what that's what Rachel was asking earlier with the stages, and Does I never like... ever heard that with colitis. Have you not? Mm -mm. No. Yeah, oh, I've actually I've heard like moderate severe. They, they are it is termed. I didn't know whether it was an actual grading system. <laughs> they call mine refractory because it's a stubborn <laughs> so, something other like the thing these. is the thing is though when you think of Crohn's like. Crohn's infiltrates different organs, so you know it, the actual staging the staging system for cancer would work quite well. You know, not all the time, but you know, like for example, like you've got to stay the different stages infiltrate different organs, or whether it metastasize. Well, Crohn's can infiltrate different organs. Crohn's can spread. Crohn's can go microscopic. So I wondered how how well it would work. But going going back to what we said about like I don't have arthritis or fibromyalgia. However, I do suffer with so I use a crutch sometimes because of my prolapse because it's painful. But I, I won't go through stages where I get very achy legs at night and they feel like I've run a marathon. And I can get quite swollen legs and uh, like calf spasms. But they never really put it down to anything. I've never sort of fought for a, a diagnosis of or a, to try and find out what it was. You know, they have suggested post-sepsis syndrome. But one GP just said, you've just been through a hell of a lot. Like your body is like... Yeah, but you know, post, it's, it's recovering for years. Yeah, post sepsis syndrome is something that that is talked about, but it's I don't think it's been explored to the full degree because what you've got on your legs is pretty much water retention, isn't it? Especially over night time, that's where your legs yeah. are swelling up. Yeah, I think that's probably to do with the renal the renal issues anyway. So it's probably a combination. But even before they they actually said I was in renal failure in February, before that I was having problems with just the aching the achiness at night just, but it, i go through stages where it's fine and then it comes back i don't know what kicks it off it's just something that i've just accepted it just comes and goes i think it's just how you're feeling how your body is within itself and for especially those that suffer with the joint pain especially things like Raynards and the osteo and the ra and the arthritis even though it affects you all the time, I think you find it worse in the winter because of the cold, because you haven't got the heat that you would have from the summer. Mm. So it, it's like it's like going abroad for a week and feeling absolutely fantastic the whole time that you're on holiday and then coming back home and with a, within a month you're feeling, feeling 20 times worse than what you was before you went on holiday because you've had all that heat and then you've not had that heat. Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky I, I don't suffer that. But I'm cold all the time. Yeah, but Stephanie, oh, you got you used to get calf spasms like me, though, didn't you? you said to me, it yeah, I, I, mine's classed as rest, restless legs, and uh, oh, okay. they're horrible. They are. A lot of women get it during pregnancy. Um, because my mother-in-law used to like give me complete empathy. Um, I've headbutted the ceiling a number of times with that because I've got like, a, sl a sloped ceiling. Yeah, it's not hard in your bedroom, Steve, is it? It's like that. Your head goes there. The amount of times I've nearly hit my head. Gra just grabbed my calf. Oh, I nearly drowned in the swimming. But that's that's with me. It was a case of uh, de dehydration, haven't drunk enough, and, and just get a um, rock hard leg syndrome. There's, there's not that much that that helps with it. Um, but. Like, does anyone has anyone else noticed that Giggly. you get cold easier because you don't you've lost an organ? <laughs> like, uh -huh. I'm not even kidding because Cat from Cat's Bag of Crap, she said it. She took, she mentioned it in a post once about the fact that because <coughs> she doesn't have a large intestine anymore, that she her body finds it hard to regulate temperature, um, and gets cold really? quicker. And like, I used to get cold before. But uh, Stephen says I have a faulty thermostat because I got cold in 32 degree heat in Italy. Wow. Um, but I'm not cold when we go to Edinburgh in the winter. See, I'll tell you now, and Ben, ben I swear gospel for this, I'm just quite a cold person anyway. I don't, not that I'm cold as in emotional, but I'm cold as in <laughs> my feet, 
my feet, my hands, um, my body. But at the same time, I find it difficult to regulate my heat because I'll be freezing cold and I'll get into bed and now I've got the winter duvet on and then I'm really hot and have to turn the fan on. Same as me. I'm quite Steve. I'm quite cold, and I I made him get a blanket for his bed for his his flat. I was so cold. I was like being all snuggly as well. Yeah, but then then in the next breath, yeah, you, you want the window open. Yeah, yeah but Steve. I'm the same height Come of on. winter. Mm. Um, I can walk. I only get cold when I'm poorly. That's it. I find my, my internal organs are not cold, and even with all that extra room in there since my bowel's been removed, still sits in there quite warm. I've got a warm, uh, small intestine. It's really snuggly. <laughs> <laughs> Every so often when it flicks to oh, you, dear. Steve, I can just see your ear. It's like just your ear. It's as if your <laughs> ear is like the more important part of your body in the beam. The beam, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But- I mean, what what would you give th- give give to people as winter tips for coping, it's especially considering because the cold exacerbates the, the, the condition? What tips would you give? Hot water bottle water baths. Muscle. Baths. Paracetamol. Frequent paracetamol. I haven't got a bath. Sucks. Sucks. Keeping warm, like it, like sometimes when it's really cold, I like. Everything, especially when I had to see pubic catheter, kicked off badly to spasm. So I would have thermal underwear that worked quite well. But now my blood has been removed and the catheter's gone. It, you know, I don't get as much pain as I used to, so that doesn't kick off so bad. I but like I, wear wear a lot of hoodies. It's kind of trying to get nick them. Gloves is yeah, another good. Gloves is another good one though. Yeah, good set of gloves. I couldn't Even wear a pair of gloves in the house. In the house, I would feel stupid. There's only you there. You could have a rave. Yeah, you could, you could put your hip hop on and have <laughs> yeah. a rave. My, my white gloves on. <laughs> heat packs think... is another good one. You can get microwavable heat packs, the ones that you can put in the microwave to heat up, which go into a sleeve. So that's, um, I think the name on the box is a Fortuna. I am actually trying to find some decent heat pads at the moment, but the ones that you stick on and that you can leave on for the day just for my hips, because I do the school runs and because I'm out a lot, my hips are getting really bad and there's nothing worse because it's about a three mile trek that way and then back. <laughs> and there's, <coughs> there's nothing worse than your hip conking out when you're halfway through doing the school run and you're limping home. But I used to have a hot cup of coffee, drink the coffee while it's still hot and then and then put the, the mug because my main arthritis pain was in my in like the cleft in your butt cheek and it's just kind of like like sit with the with the mug pushed in you know that like pressure was was oh. re- would relieve the pain like i do that at work driving the truck and i was gonna say it's a good job it didn't slip us <laughs> no, no, it, it dig it in you know because obviously you can't push hard enough with your hand in that, in that eventually your fingers are gonna start hurting well i used to, i disclaimer don't do this when I had when I had my catheter and I had a lot of bowel obstructions with the prolapse that started, I used to use a remote because the pain was so bad. I've done that. I've I've used a remote sometimes, and I you know luckily I don't do that anymore. But I you had to sometimes it was so bad I had to relieve it. So. Um, putting a heat pad. Oh, excuse me, I've been up early, not as early as these lot, but I, it's early for me. Um, I find putting a heat pad in between like tighter support wear or mm. fat pants if you don't have a stormer yet um, because fat pants are obviously much more constricting it adds that a bit more pressure so you get the heat and the pressure rather than just having it on a, like just on your normal underwear or a top um, I always found that helped um, and an acupuncture is pretty good. I mean, my I'm really lucky. My sister-in-law is a ac- qualified acupuncturist. Um, and just before I went in for my surgery, she she sta- she stabbed my back, and so I get a lot of lower back pain from the way that I used to sit because of the pain. I'd always sit cr- scrunched over, and I with psychosomatic, I still do it. So my lower back's absolutely screwed. Um, joys of IBD because I was just constantly in pain, but. Uh, um, uh, the acupuncture is pretty good um, as long as you go to someone that's reputable 
Because because there's nothing brilliant. worse. There's nothing worse than going to someone, trusting them to stab you with a load of needles, and not knowing whether they're actually any good. Because especially if you lay down, your lungs move up. Mm. So like, there's like you've got to be really careful where you put the needles. My now old... I knew that because Stacey told me that. My old I that. used it for the nose. Used it for my, back when I got the re, the renal diagnosis. He used it for the nausea. Might but he's gone now like a different surgery but we used a note and it worked really well like he only did it on my wrist but it worked quite well so i have been thinking about that again i had it for a uh, for um the suspected uh fibromyalgia which wasn't but uh it was amazing i was getting like improved sleep from week to week i was, I was getting like three hours sleep and then it was going up an hour per week through that but i get into such a relaxed state lying on one of their beds with the hole in you're looking at the floor. And when the alarm used to go off, I'd tense up because I'd be that, that relaxed. And then and she, I was okay as long as I didn't know how far the needle was going in. When she said something like, oh, this one might hurt a little bit, my back tensed. Then they couldn't pull them out then. It's like my muscles mm. gripping hold of them. I remember coming home um, from a shift in a nursing home and Stacey was around stabbing Stephen. And... Um, she put mine in my forehead and it felt like it pop when you pop a spot it was really weird when she put it in and like my hands and my feet but because i have such anxiety with needles and cannulas and stuff in my hands i really panicked um but if you're scared of needles it's not too bad it depends if you're scared mm -hmm. of a specific place like my lower back if i could let stacy do it because i know they're so fine Whereas, like, the needles you normally have in your back for surgery are horrific for me. Terrifying. <laughs> um, oh. Elaine's just emailed in because she was saying about her type of Crohn's because I know she's got um, perianal. Um, she's saying that hers, for, for the way that they've classed it, is a morbidity of a stage two. Right. Um, oh, and, so his was staged? Yeah, and um, the mm, other one with Elaine as well is that she was tr she was on azathioprine, but she was only for six weeks because it sent for six weeks because it sent her liver toxic. Because if you think about it, the treatment is is you know it's key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not you know obviously it's not the same combinations, different combinations. But I just wondered if 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 it ever got brought up the stage process, I might look more into it because mm. I think it's quite interesting. This, because it seems to there seems to react quite similar like louise with the microscopic goes into the bloodstream goes very micro goes very small and it's a bit like when the cancer mutates and spreads that's it, it spreads around and yeah that's a key chemo drug isn't it yeah a, a, a lower dose my my crohn's is all in my uterus it hasn't thankfully it hasn't made its way any lower down but it's all over my um fallopian tubes and um my um, uterus dome as well so and that's now sticking to what is left of part of my large bowel so that's all got to be removed at some point but it is the, the irony is with, Crohn, with with Crohn's and UC is that they do in my in my personal opinion they do treat it like a cancer and it's weird they um, do and they don't they do but I don't think you're follow you're not followed as closely really as somebody who's got <laughs> as in as in once you know, once you're kind of sort of say cured or well they say they you know, if they removed a large buff or yeah. remission, you I don't think you're not as followed as closely. But it does it, the histology of it is it acts very similar. So it's quite no, I, I might do a bit more research around it because I think it's I, quite interesting. I think the main problem that you've got with histology as well is compared to a newly diagnosed patient to a patient that's maybe had it 10, 15, 20 years, your symptoms, even though they present the same, it doesn't pre pre present the same in your blood work and other bits and pieces. It is not because your body's so used to fighting it for what your body used to think was a major infection in the early days of diagnosis. Your body doesn't look at it the same way at, at that point so i mean the amount of people that are going into hospital especially recently with crohn's flare-ups and other flare-ups and they're not being listened to or they're saying that you know surgery may be only be an option and everything else or, or using meds because it doesn't always react the same way as it did in the beginning our bodies adapt they don't always adapt you know for somehow my body even with sepsis my white blood cells say 
stay pretty normal, which is quite ironic, really, which isn't the usual usual blood work. But in every time I have sepsis and confirmed sepsis with blood culture, my white blood count stays, stays the same. However, my inflammatory markers are extreme. But it, it's it's different for each person, and I think the more long the chronic illness you have, your blood work's different, and you can't compare them. But they still do. Well, it's why it's why they tested me for the microscopic because my blood work was coming back. My white blood cell was fine. Mm. My infl my inflammation markers were slightly up, but nothing out of the ordinary that could be classed as a massive infection or anything like that. And then it then that they've gone microscopic and they're going, well, it's got it's all it's full blown free large bowel and it, it's attaching itself to other stuff. You know, and they've I've been I've been told from, you know, sort of two thousand and thirteen until two thousand and fifteen that no, my Crohn's isn't active and then I get told uh, four months before it's due to have my op that it is active and that they can't go through with doing the, 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 the full the, the, the full whammy and that I'm just going to have to have an ileostomy and wait and see it through in, until they can try and get it under control. It's madness. Again, it'd be, again it's like to the point where it, it sort of interests me, the point where they say, right, you have to have an ileostomy, you know. Again, there's no sort of written guidelines and I know it depends if there's obstructions, if there's complications, but, you know, Steve, yours was quite emergency-based, wasn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. It was, wasn't it? It was, yeah. The kind of thing is, my my initial um, diagnosis came with, with um, a sigmoidoscopy and a colonoscopy, where they they found like like ten I think ten to fifteen centimeters of ulceration, and then my my, my next I didn't have no follow up then really that they, they was treating me for with all sorts of DMARDs and steroids, but but it wasn't until I actually went to hospital, you know, really poorly. That, that, that they they scanned me again and they scoped me again and that was like uh, eighty five centimeters. So the bit in between they oh. could have been could have done with a few like I don't know two much two yearly checkups or something like that. They'd have perhaps mm. caught it in the interim and and tried me on a biological earlier because you know I, mm. the biological well the last two years were horrific. If I'd have known how how well I'd have felt after my surgery, I'd have done this like years before. So it's kind of like they, they they kind of like leave you to it. They found a drug, with, you know, you're you're surviving on it. We'll leave you to it. Whereas you know, I think they could do a few more checks in between. Yeah, I don't think IBD patients are monitored closely enough, and I don't not, I don't not. think I don't think they're listened to enough either. To be fair, it's it's oh it's it's okay. You've been there for here. You go here's some steroids, or here you go here's a drug. Try that and. Off you go, yeah, I'll but, see you in six months. Like, for instance, the cancer, you know, once the cancer's been found, they're on it and, and they're not going to, mm. uh, they're not going to let it slip. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I think no, it no. all depends on your doctor because I had a, before my surgery, my um, gastroenterologist was amazing. Really? I used to see him like every two weeks. Um, he was probably also the easiest one to blackmail for steroids. Um, out of him and my GP, who was also amazing. Um, unfortunately, like, because everyone presumed every, whenever I got sick, it was all that always down to my IBD because of the, where I'd get the pain from, like, my pouch. They just presumed that it was always that. And I used to go, and I remember being admitted a couple of times overnight with horrific UTIs because they just presumed that the pain was IBD-related and not mm -hmm. actually um, my bladder. This is but this. my doctors were fantastic, and my surgeon this time round, who did my aftercare for my first surgery, he's fantastic as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just not everyone is as lucky to get amazing doctors, unfortunately. It's not just yeah. with IBD; it's with any chronic illness. It's like fighting in hospital, going, "How do you know my sepsis is from my kidney?" Because my urine culture came back as normal. So they're saying it's my because my kidneys are full of fluid and enlarged and scarred and and kidney function low but they don't know it could be my rectum it could still be my large bowel this is my argument they don't know but because mm. you could you you know i'm down as kidney function renal failure renal, renal problem is they're saying kidneys but they don't really know and this is where the frustration has been a long-term chronic ill with me with a rare condition as well but the same with ibd is you're fighting your case to kind of they forget other stuff they just seem narrow-minded yeah and don't you know. need to question everything really don't you yeah, you can't, you can't just take everything as red. I, I, I know. But, you know, they do I'm, make I'm, mistakes, don't they? 
I'll put up on the show page my friend Stan that I mentioned earlier. She um, shared a picture about going into um, doctor's appointments when you're chronically sick, and you may have seen it actually about um, your, your house on fire, and you're like, and someone's like, oh well, what, where's the worst fire? And you're like, oh well, the fire on my curtains is pretty bad. That that's new. That and like, there's a fire somewhere else, and that's pretty annoying. And and like, oh, but say your TV's on fire and that could be because of electrical things here, here, and here. And it's like, oh, well, that's always like that. So I'm not really bothered about that. You have all these different things and they, mm-hmm. they don't ever, they just focus on the one. And it's like, mm-hmm. but they're all linked, especially when it's an autoimmune disease or like what you, or a neurological disease, it's all linked. Mm-hmm. So. But Rachel, what you what you said about um, the urostomies and obviously IBD affecting the bladder, mm-hmm. that is something that I will ask when I go to my next appointment because for years I hurt when I go to the wee, but I, I think that's because obviously I know my bladder's stuck to part of my inside. So it hurts when, when I release. It feels like it's dropping. But... but again, what point, you know, what point will they act on say bladder issues say say you started to retain urine louise you know yeah that could be for overactive bladder could be you might have fowler syndrome it could be interstitial studies you don't know until you have a cystoscopy no. but what um, i'm saying at what point do they do they actually decide to do i don't know i just find the whole thing fascinating and me because yeah, i don't be, have i'll be perfectly bladder. honest with you i'm probably lucky especially since my surgery is worth i pee tw- twice a day so okay um it might be That's quite I, good. I might ask <laughs> next time I go up and um, I see my surgeon I might do I might ask about ask that. how common it is like if it's a re- like a size I think it's quite weird because not many people no I'll ask about that because that is something that might be worth looking into um what was I going to say yeah thank you to everybody that answered the polls this week um it was an 81 percent yes that those of you with IBD do have forms of spondylitis arthritis rheumatoid arthritis, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis. Um, and there was a lot about hypermobility syndrome as well. I don't know too much about that. And um, there was also a couple of people that said that they'd had the fibromyalgia di- diagnosis as well with their UC or their Crohn's. Um, I had a few come back to, well, I had about 20 come back to me and said that um, they had severe joint pain, but they had yet to be diagnosed with any form of um arthritis and that um they'd either been dismissed or be currently going through tests and that's about it so i think next week we are going to stick with the crohn's and uc just for another week and um, because with christmas coming up we're going to be doing things like how not to get stressed at christmas or ideas for food planning and bits and pieces like that and spending time away from home and that with ostomies etc so next week we're going to do what would you tell a newly diagnosed yourself with Crohn's or what would you tell a newly diagnosed yourself with UC because there's a there's a few of us here that do patient advocacy that go and see patients and speak with them when they're in hospital and they're going through stoma surgery and university talks and stuff like that so i think it might be worth with a bit of hindsight for those of you watching with ibd on what we would have originally with hindsight what we would have told ourselves back then i think rachel should do that as well yeah but for the autonomic neuropathy did i get that right this time yeah yeah, yeah but I, I i think as because well as i know it, i know it's ibd related but yeah i think but that she should it's, do it because yeah it's not like I know she doesn't have her stomach for us for IBD, but I do think that she we can't just exclude that. So even if I was just flying the little flag for them, I'm not I, saying you're excluding them. Oh, I hadn't finished. <laughs> um, I was also going to, um, as Steffi said about Rachel, was also going to do what would you tell tell yourself for those of you that have got chronic illness but aren't in the IBD bracket as well? Because okay. I think Ra- Rachel more than any of us is more about the self help and realizing things when you need to help and when things should be said and everything else and to be perfectly honest with you rachel is like the pillar of all of us she talks a lot of sense (laughs) 
I don't know, Steve would disagree. But I think Sophie's, <laughs> Sophie's, be, no, Sophie's beating me with the self help stuff at the moment. Texting. Oh, yeah, Natalie's self. Natalie's. Um, and your course. Booney Mummy self help, that's really good. And um, mm. the Smart Lionesses, Unapologetically Me, that's also pretty good. Um, I'm finding them quite useful. They're not the same as the affirmations that you keep getting wanting me to do, though. Affirmations. Steve, what thinks you, you text gibberish. <laughs> you text too fast. Oh, it's horrific, isn't it? I tell you, it's like the hieroglyphics, it's like the Egyptian hieroglyphics. <laughs> we scan up on Rachel Day. Right, Louise, we've got to go. Yeah, we have yeah, got to we've go. Run, okay. We've run over again. We have run over, so we're going to say goodnight for this evening. Um, for those of you that want any specific topics covered in December, can you please inbox us and let us know and we can pick and we can put those on through the weeks in December. Because I've got January. You've got January. Uh -huh. Steve, yeah, Steve's, helping, Steve's helping with Christmas because we need a bit of mal input. That's not just female. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're on. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll say goodnight for this evening and thank you ever so much for watching and um, hoping you have a good week and hoping for those of you that are currently feeling well enough that we don't have any more hospital admissions within the next week because we've had a few the last couple of weeks. So we wish you luck. Stay safe. Behave. Bye. Don't do anything we want to do. And we'll see you next yeah. week. Bye.